Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Kyle Craigle, and I'm an artist at Cirque du Soleil. That's right, it is me again. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's Color Me Cirque, the official Cirque du Soleil makeup tutorial series. I'm your host, Kyle. If it's your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We have tons of fun here every week, as you are about to see. Today, we are doing a super fun look from our show, Kuza. I hope that you guys will enjoy this makeup tutorial as much as I did. If you guys are wanting to follow me along in this tutorial, make sure that you check out which tools and which products you are going to need. We have provided all that information for you guys down in the description box. And once you have those things gathered, get ready because the tutorial starts right now. Alrighty guys, it is that time of the day again. I'm super excited to get made up and transform into this fun character from our show Kuza. Get excited because the tutorial is about to begin. So the first step of this makeup is actually going to be an eyebrow cover. We are only going to cover our left eyebrow, and you can do this with an adhesive of your choice. You can use spirit gum, you can use glue stick. In this case, I am using a medical adhesive. Similarly to it being your product of choice, you can also apply it with the tool of your choice. In this case, I just have a little rubber, short, spatula-like tool. You could use a metal spatula, you could use your fingers even. Whatever you guys are most comfortable with, just make that left eyebrow disappear. And once I feel that I've applied enough of that adhesive and it is nice and tacky, I'm going to go ahead and set this down with a neutral setting powder and a powder puff. As I'm applying this powder, I'm going to press down hard into my brow bone to make sure that that powder catches all of the moist areas of this adhesive. Of course, once you have set it down and the eyebrow cover is now nice and flat and matte, you will just go in with a powder brush and remove the excess powder. Okay, now that we only have one eyebrow, we are ready to start applying our foundation. Today, I am going in with a regular makeup sponge and a white cream foundation, and I'm applying this in a few places on my face. And I'm going to apply this to a few areas. The first area, we're gonna apply on the forehead, and we're going to create a circular V-shape that will start from the center of your forehead right before the bridge of your nose begins. We're gonna pull that shape up to your hairline. Once that shape is applied, we're gonna apply a little bit more of this white cream under the eyes and sort of on the high points of our cheekbones, on the chin, and on our smile lines. All right, so next we are going in with another makeup sponge and another highlight color. Now, I know that this color looks very similar to the white on camera, but it is actually an extremely, extremely, extremely fair skin tone sort of color. We are going to apply this skin tone color under the eyes, on the eyelids, on the bridge of the nose. Once you've applied this color to the center of the face, we are then going to pull this color on top of the eyebrows and actually follow the bottom line of that circular V shape we have going on on the forehead. We're going to apply a little bit more of it around the lips on both sides of the mouth, and we're also going to dab a little bit on the chin. All right, we have our highlights all complete, so now we are going in with a foundation color that will actually match the skin. In this case, I went for a foundation that's a little bit more tan. We are gonna end up blending those highlight colors and the foundation color together, so if it's a little darker than your skin tone, it's okay because the blending will lighten some things up. I digress. We want something that's similar to your skin tone, so we're just gonna apply that in all of the areas where we did not apply the highlights, and of course, we're going to apply that under the face and blend it down the neck. Alrighty, you have your base coat down. Now it is time to blend said base coat. So you can use the three sponges that you use to apply with the coordinating colors and blend all of those edges together. You can also use a brush or a clean sponge if you prefer to use those methods. Just make sure that we can still feel all the colors where we applied them. We just wanna make sure that they have a nice blended edge. So if you are familiar with cream foundation, then you will know that while we blend, you don't want to swipe the foundation, you just want to tap with a very light pressure around the edges, and you just want to do that continuously until the edges are nice and blended. Now, don't be afraid to take your time on this step. Blending does take time, but I think that taking time for the blending is totally worth the final effect. So if this step takes 10 minutes, a little less, a little more, don't be surprised. It takes a while to blend all of this foundation out. All right, now that our base is nice and blended, I'm going to grab a stipple sponge and a cream blush, and I'm going to apply that cream blush on the apples of the cheeks. Since I'm using a stipple sponge, we want to make sure that in applying the color, we don't lose the texture of the stipple sponge. So make sure that you don't overpress and that you don't press too hard in the same place too many times, otherwise we lose that texture. And then you might as well have just grabbed another regular sponge or a brush to apply this color. All right, now that your cheeks are nice and rosy, we're going to begin working on the eyes. 
So I'm taking a nice medium sized flat brush and a medium brown cream and I'm just going to go in and define the actual crease of my eyelid under the eyebrow. I use the words actual and under my brow because on the other side we are going to create a false crease shape that will go way above our natural eyebrow and will actually go on top of the eyebrow cover. You will see what I'm talking about shortly. All right, so now it's time for the left side. On this side, we are going to draw a big false crease on top of that eyebrow cover. We want a nice, round, big circular shape. Obviously, use me in the video as reference, and as you're applying this color, feel free to blend as you apply. We wanna make sure that there's some nice intensity, so don't worry about it at the beginning, but as you finish up, just lightly blend the edges a little bit. I will also add that in this crease shape, we do wanna leave a quote-unquote eyelid of the regular foundation color. So you're just going to use this to define a new fake crease, but you're not going to completely cover the eyelid with this brown cover, just the outer edges of it. All right, once we're finished defining that new crease, I'm going to grab a medium to deep brown eyebrow pencil and I'm going to draw the shape of our eyebrows. On the left side, I'm going to draw a nice, tall, round eyebrow that sort of matches the shape of the crease that we just created. And on the other side, I'm going to define a thinner and also more rounded eyebrow shape compared to my natural eyebrow. I'm just going to draw it on my actual eyebrow instead of my forehead. <laughs> If you have thick eyebrows like me, make sure that the uncovered eyebrow has a nice layer of foundation on top of it. You can go back in with a mascara brush or a sponge to make sure that that is the case because we are going to draw a thinner eyebrow sort of on the upper half of where our natural brow is. The rule for both of these eyebrows, we wanna make sure that they don't go too far in towards the center of the face. We're gonna make sure that these eyebrows end just to the inside of the inner corner of the eye. All right, once you have those eyebrows laid down, we are actually going to go in and set our entire face, of course, using a neutral set powder and a powder puff. Now, with this makeup, we are actually gonna end up having our eyelids quite white. Therefore, I made sure that I touched up on the eyelids before I actually applied the powder. So I went in with a nice clean brush and I tapped out any creasing that may have been there and then applied the powder on top of my eyes. Once I was finished setting my eyes, I went around and touched up as needed and set the rest of the face. Alrighty, now that you're looking white as Casper, it is time to come back to a normal human skin tone. So you're gonna grab your big fluffy brush and brush off the rest of that excess setting powder. All right, now that our base is down and set and we've got rid of that excess powder, we are going to start off by defining the eyebrow. I am taking a small cat tongue brush and a deeper brown. As I'm applying this, it doesn't look super duper dark, but it is definitely not the lightest of browns either. I'm just going to apply this powder over the shape that we've already defined to make sure that we have a nice opaque base to work on. Okay, and we are going to continue on by grabbing a nice small definer brush. I would compare this brush to an artist's detail brush. It's quite thin and quite precise, and I'm going to grab a dark brown gel eyeliner, and I'm going to draw some individual hairs all along this eyebrow. And of course, what you've done on one side, you must do on the other. So just follow the shape that you've already defined. Just draw some nice little hairs all along the shape of the right eyebrow. Okay, now that our eyebrows are nice and framed, we are going to go back in and work on the eyeshadow. So I'm going to grab a nice circular dense eyeshadow brush and a super warm light brown shadow. Then I'm just going to redefine and re-blend that crease that we previously applied with the cream color. We're actually gonna use this shadow to pull the crease shape all the way to the inside of the eye. So you're actually going to want that crease shape to connect practically down to the inner corner of your eye. As you've applied the basic shape, you wanna blend the edges and we wanna make sure that on both sides we leave some white space under the eyebrow, in between the eyebrow and the crease color. And for the left side of our face, the exact same rules apply as the right side. We are just going to blow up and exaggerate that big crease shape with the same eyeshadow. Okay, now that we have applied the eyeshadow and defined the crease, we are actually going to go in with the same gel liner that we used to define the eyebrows to now define the eyes. So we're gonna apply this eyeliner in three places. We're going to apply it on the actual lash line about halfway through. We're going to use it to define the crease above the eyelid, and we are also going to use it to draw a line under the eye. Now, I'm working on the left side, which means that we are drawing this crease way higher than our actual natural crease. In this case, I recommend that you draw the line slightly above where your brow bone begins. So if you were to look into a mirror straight forward, I would maybe draw it a little bit under a centimeter above where you see your natural crease. 
Okay, now that we have the upper portion defined, we are going to start working on the lower portion. For the eyeliner under the lower lash line, we're gonna make sure that we leave a nice big space between the actual lash line and the eyeliner. We're gonna add some white in here and it's really gonna open up the eye, but that step comes later on. On the left side, we have taken the eye shape and we have exaggerated everything. So the same rule will apply to this bottom eyeliner. We are actually going to leave more space under the left eye than we will end up leaving on the right eye. This is purposeful and this is exactly what we want. So once again, use my shapes as a reference. Once you finish defining both eyes, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, and now that we're working on the right eye, you're gonna go ahead with the same products and the same brush, apply the eyeliner in all three places as we did on the left side, just to make everything a little smaller and a little less exaggerated. And now that the eyeliner is all applied, I'm going to go ahead and blend out the edges of the eyeliner with a deep purple shade. It doesn't show up as well on camera as it does in person, but I'm just grabbing a dome-shaped, dense eyeshadow brush and I'm blending out the upper and lower lash lines with that deep purple, marrying them with that warm brown that we already have laid down. Now that your purple is laid down, we are going to go in with the same warm brown and we're gonna blend out that purple and make both the crease line and the lower lash line nice and smoked out with that light brown color. Okay, now that the eyeshadow is nice and blended, we are going to move on to some of our steps that are more precise. So I'm gonna grab a small definer brush and a water-based white face paint. Can be a basic face paint, can be alcohol activated if you want. Anything that just ends up being a liquid that will dry down. And I'm just going to define the space that we left in the lower lash lines with this white product. Now that we have used that white to define the under part of the eyes, we are going to do the same to define the crease that is on the upper portion of the eye. So I'm just gonna go in with the same brush and the same product and I'm going to redefine the crease and then cover the entire lid with this product. Now, this product will dry down and crease very quickly. So once you have applied the white all over the eyelid, you're actually gonna go in and set it down with a white eyeshadow. You can use whichever brush you want to apply that matte white eyeshadow to set it down. You just wanna do this one eye at a time as this product does set down and crease quite quickly. Keep in mind that this step is the time to correct any fumbles that you may have had while defining the crease shape with the darker eyeliner. I did have a little bump in the road on my left side and I was able to just easily correct it with this white product. Now's the time to make those corrections. Okay, and now that I have successfully set this white product down with the powder without too much creasing, I am now going to move on to the other side and repeat the same steps. Okay, and now that we have set both sides down with the white, I'm actually gonna go in with the same brush and that same warm brown eyeshadow, and I'm just gonna redefine the outer third of what is now our eyelid on both of the sides. Now that you've finished the eyeshadow, we're just going to apply a light coat of mascara to the top lashes only. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a lip liner that is in a warm brown shade that is actually really similar to the eyeshadow that we've been applying this entire time, and I'm just going to define my lips with it. Now that the edges of the lips are defined, I'm now going to go ahead and fill in the shape with the same cream that we used earlier as our blush on our cheeks. So I'm just taking a small cat tongue brush and I'm just gonna completely fill in that shape with the cream blush. And just to add a little bit more dimension, I'm quickly gonna take that sponge where we applied our super duper light skin tone highlight color, quickly dab in the center of my bottom lip and re-blend just to add a little bit more dimension and a highlight to the lip. And once your lips are nice and blended, we are going to grab our trusty powder puff and neutral set powder, and we're gonna go ahead and set those lips down and then brush off the excess powder with our fluffy brush. All right, now that our lips are set down, I'm going to go in with a nice sized eyeshadow brush and our matte white eyeshadow, and I'm just gonna go ahead and redefine some of the highlights. As you can see, I'm starting with the corners of the mouth or the smile lines, if you will. I'm then moving on to the forehead, so I'm going to apply it on the base of the forehead and running down the bridge of the nose, and then finally, I'm going to add a little bit more onto the chin. Alrighty guys, and once you are done re-accentuating those highlight zones, you are actually done with the first version of this look. This specific makeup that you see on screen now is actually used towards the beginning of the show during what we call the pre-show animation. And before the actual show starts, the artist will go backstage and apply some red accents before he comes back out on stage. So you can leave the makeup as it is now, or if you wanna continue on for the final version of the look, just go ahead and follow the steps along with me now. Okay, so I am now grabbing a red eyeshadow and a small cat tongue definer brush, and I'm applying this eyeshadow wet. 
I'm actually gonna apply this along the ear. So I'm just gonna trace a basic line around the edges of both of my ears. Now for wetting this eyeshadow, you could use a setting spray, a regular drop of water if you want, but in this case, I'm actually using a water-based mixing medium. All right, and now that our ears are nice and red, we want our lips to be nice and red. So I'm going to go in with the same product and the same brush, and I'm just going to define the outside edges of my lips. So I'm going to use this product just like a lip liner. Once you've defined the outer shape of the lips, we do want to fill the lips in with red, but we don't want it to be a completely flat color. So I encourage you to use your base layer, which already has a little bit of dimension to it, to your advantage. So just blend the red into the colors that are already existing, but still try to keep a little bit of a highlight zone towards the inside of the lips. All right guys, it is now time for our final step. I am taking the same product and I'm actually going to grab a stipple sponge, dipping into that red, and I'm going to add a red texture onto the nose, the cheeks, and the forehead. The shapes are sort of organic, and of course I'm following a photo reference, so go ahead and use me as a reference. Just keep in mind that the most important part of this step is that we feel the texture. If you press too hard and or press too many times with this stipple sponge, it will just end up as big, flat, red blobs, and that's not what we want. We want to feel the texture, and we want to use the stipple sponge to warm up the face as much as possible. Okay, and now that you have applied those nice red hot spots to the face, you are done with the final version of this look. Congratulations! You look like a clown. I loved wearing this makeup. It made me feel super fun and goofy, which I think is the entire effect and the whole point of this makeup. So, enjoy it. Oh, wow! You guys look super different! Oh my god! Hey clowns, what's up? You guys are looking so great, I am sure. I hope that you guys enjoyed this look from our show Kuza. I think it's super fun, I hope that you guys think the same. Actually, let me know down in the comments below if you do think the same. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button if you wanna get notified so that you can join us next week for yet another makeup tutorial. Until then, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Jeez.